All right, starting things off with 2014, question two. Right off the bat, I could tell that we're going to be dealing with some sort of um, centripetal force problem. Should be interesting. Well, starting off easy, it says that uh, it wants us to determine an expression for the height of the ramp h in the given terms. And they tell us that it's a smooth ramp smooth ramp that reaches the bottom with a speed v0. All right? And we know that the height of the ramp is uh, h. So easiest thing, potential equals kinetic mgh equals 1 half mv squared. And we want to know what the height of the ramp is. So it's going to be v squared over 2g. And boom, there we go. All right, uh, one point for conservation of energy, one point for substituting improperly, and one point for the correct answer. This is by far the easiest three points you could ever ask for. Uh, you could have done also uh, kinematics. You could have used this equation plus 2AD. And basically, though, the thing here is that you have had to figure out what the acceleration is from the whole Fg uh, sine of theta so that A equals G sine theta. But then, oh no, what's, we don't have a theta here, so we have to find a way to come up with theta. Well, it's going down the ramp distance d, this is h, this is theta, so I can actually plug in d over h. Uh, whoop, sorry, other way around. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it should be h over d. Plug those numbers in, uh, realize that it starts off at zero, and you end up getting that b squared equals 2g uh, h, and yada yada yada. So I've said before that this equation actually comes from uh, conservation of energy. So they're one and the same. Alright, this one's a little bit weird only because of the fact that it's not clear exactly which part, unless I'm, I forgot something, it's not really clear which part they're talking about when they're asking for the vertical component of the net force on the block. Uh, I'm going to, uh, well I know, I'm going to assume that they're talking about after it leaves the ramp, since that's kind of what we talked about. So let's see, when it goes into this ramp, what's the direction of the net force? Well, it's not up, so there's zero. Now the reason is that it's um, not accelerating upwards, so not accelerating upwards. Or actually, you know what, let's replace that with vertically. And that was two points. One point for zero and one point for basically saying that's not accelerating. Alright, for this part, it says draw an arrow uh, on the block indicating the horizontal component of the net force. Okay, now this one's tricky because you're going to want to say that, there, that it's going like this towards the center of the circle. But, you have to remember that there's friction on this. Because there's friction on the wall, there is also a force going down like that. So, they want the net force. The net force is going to be down and a force to the left. So instead of drawing those two lines, I want to instead draw a line that goes like this. That's my net force. And again, you would make a comment saying that there is a, um, because it's going in a circle, 
that one of the components is towards the center. the left and because there is friction it's got it going um, I guess uh, opposite motion so basically back uh, I don't want to say down only because of the fact that down implies vertical motion we kind of already said that down is nothing. So this is more of like left and back, I guess you could say. Um, and that's pretty much uh, your reasoning. Um, three points. Um, two full points for this. And one point for this explanation. Alright, this one's easier than what it looks like. So it's asking for the normal force of the block on the, uh, by the circular wall. Now I'm gonna bring this picture again. It's what we just did. We said that there was a the net force was in this direction. One of the forces is going towards the center and one's down. And I said this was the frictional force which means that this must be the normal force. And since this is the force towards the center this is also the centripetal force. And they kind of even said that it says a function of V. Now, most of you might want to think that when it says function of V, that you want to do calculus, but all that means is that your equation has to have V in it. So, Fn equals Fc. And boom. We got our answer function of V. One point for basically that answer. All right, now this one's asking for the tangential acceleration. All right, again, when we look back at here, there is a normal force, which we already know is mv squared over r, and we have the frictional force. This frictional force is giving the tangential acceleration. So setting friction equal to ma gives us that tangential acceleration. So that's what they're looking for. Basically, they want us to say F net equals MA, FF equals mu FN equals MA, um, mu MV squared over R equals MA, mm -hmm. mu V squared over R. Actually, R, capital R. Uh, this was three points. One point for the answer. Uh, again, has to be consistent with your work from your answers from before. One point for substituting in um, this normal force. And then one point for realizing that friction was the net force. Um, and once again, they ask for magnitude of acceleration, so sine does not matter, but technically this would be a negative acceleration. Alright, now this is where it gets interesting, because now they're saying they want the equation as a function of time. Now we're actually going to deal with calculus. Um, now, uh, this one's a little bit trickier as far as the integration goes. I know for the non-calculus students, all the juniors, I had mentioned that the calculus isn't that intense. The only time it really does get intense is for the free response, like a question like this. Um, now, this is this whole problem was worth 15 points. Uh, if you're able to just set up the integration without actually doing it, and you got everything right up so far, you would have been able to get 14 of the, uh, of the 15 points even without having to integrate it. So again, you don't need to know too much of the integration, but you should know how to set up it. All right, so this is what we're going to do. So they want us to integrate as a function of time. Now, uh, we got before that the acceleration was, um, I'm putting in the negative now, mu v squared over r. All right? 
Um, now what's important is because I want to get I want to actually do an integral, I'm actually going to replace dA with dV dt. Alright. Now if you remember, our goal when we see an in integration, now this one's actually not the most complicated integral, but our goal when we have to do an integral like this, starting from here, is that we want to get like terms onto one side and everything else on the other. Now our like terms in this case are dv and the v squared. Since I can actually bring the v squared over without bringing anything else over. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring the v squared over to one side and I'm going to put the dt with everything else. So I end up getting dv over v squared equals negative mu r dt. Alright, and there's my setup. And then I'm going to integ integrate both sides. This one um, is going to go, well, my time's easy. Time, for the most part, is usually always going from 0 to t unless they specifically tell you um, the bounds for t. Uh, here, though, I'm going to go from initial velocity to final velocity. In this case, my initial velocity is v0, and my final velocity is just v. You know, because I, I don't want, I want the equation as a function of a, uh, or of a, sorry. So that's my setup. Again, right here, and this is why I said you can get 14 of the 15 points without having to actually integrate it. You get one point for doing this, and one point for uh, including, actually, uh, according to the guidelines, you could you should be able to get all three points without actually having to finish the integration, but mm, maybe. So you get one point for this, one point for realizing that there's still supposed to be a negative, and then you get one point for knowing how to do the bounce. Like I said, uh, for time it's always zero to t, and for velocity, for the velocity it's usually always the initial to the final. In this case, there is an initial velocity, so we have v zero, and the final is pretty much always going to be v. All right. Now to actually do the integration, well, this side is easy. See, the mu and the r are constant, so I can pull out the mu and the r outside. And now I'm just integrating along dt, which just means that it's mu over r of t. And I'm not going to really worry about the t to 0 thing because that just gives me t, so whatever. So that's my one side. This side's a little bit different. I have the v squared. So I'm actually going to rewrite it like this. I'm going to rewrite it as v, v0, v to the negative 2 dv. All right? So v to negative 2, and if you remember, you add 1 to the exponent, and then divide by the new exponent. So what I'll end up getting is um, plus 1 is v to negative 1 divided by minus 1, integrated between v and v0. So that basically means I'm going to have negative 1 over v minus negative 1 over v0 boom boom so that's 1 over v0 minus 1 over v and again that's still equal to the mu r t alright now I have to play around with this move them some things over 1 over v0 um, plus mu naught r t equals 1 over v. Let's bring everything over. Um, sorry, I'm lose a little bit of room here. r t plus mu v0 over v0 r t equals 1 over v. So the final answer should be v equals 
B0, RT divided by R, wait, whoopsie, made a mistake here, I misread this, so that shouldn't have an R there, and that should, and let me just erase that, alright, this is mu t, so it's going to be R plus mu b0 t, which means that my final answer will be v equals v0 r over r plus mu b0 t. But again, if you struggled with that integral, don't worry. You'll at least get two of the three points for being able to set it up. Um, just try your best. Uh, but don't focus too hard with the integration. All right. Again, if you have any problems, feel free to ask me for any help.